long-term residents of, uh, of Ocean Shores. Uh, I've been here since 1980. Uh, Jan's the same. Your family's been here for a lot longer. Yes, we came up from Sydney, brought our family up at Easter 1972. So we're, we're marking 50 years being in this area and our kids are saying, wow, we're so pleased you did it. Mm, yeah, I feel the same way. Yes. <laughs> about my parents. About your parents. But we've, and we've also been through a few floods. So and where are we yes. right now? What, what's behind you, Mark? Uh, that's the Helen Street footbridge, and this is the Capricornia Canal, and uh, we've lived here since 1991, and uh, we've seen a number of floods come through, we've monitored them, we've seen them where they come up on the back here, uh, we've been through the, the uh, two, uh, 2005 flood, which came right up to uh, the back, uh, but we never flooded. Uh, but this time, uh, the 2022, we came within four centimetres of it going into our, uh, our house uh, over on the side here. Um, so we're very, we're very concerned that something does need to happen now in order to alleviate the flood levels. Uh, so that's what I think we'll be trying to look, uh, pursue now to, to make some changes for the good of everyone. Yes, um, we were part of the, uh, I guess, the start of the Ocean Shores Golf Course and the town master plan for Ocean Shores had a very important component of that was flood storage in the lakes at the golf course. And over the last 50 years, those lakes have silted up and now uh, we've lost so many million gigalitres of uh, flood storage, which we urgently need back. And that really is going to require the state government to come in and help the council, help the club to start that process. It's a very important part of stopping this area from flooding Anymore. Flood mitigation is now what we mm. seriously need to do. Another one that we're asking for is the opening of the Capricornia Canal. This is it. It's got nowhere to go. It just flows backwards and forwards, which is um, against its development consent. Council is in breach of the development consent for this canal by closing off the outlet. And I think we've had over the years many uh, attempts to get to council to uh, address this. And I think in 2017, uh, we presented uh, again a lot of what's on the website, uh, which will give you the details. Uh, it, it's becoming a, a major problem where all of the outlets have been closed uh, throughout the years. And, and uh, we're now seeing a, a small dam-like setup. When it does rain, it just ponds and builds up, trying to get out. And the only place it can get out to the ocean is all the way down to Brunswick. So it, from right from Wuyong to Fern Beach to New Brighton, South Golden Beach, right down to Readings Bay, there are major obstacles that have been put in place to stop the water just naturally getting out to the ocean. Yes. So Can you illustrate that on the, on, on the map here, some yeah. of these outfalls that have been closed off? Yeah, well there's one here at Wuyong, uh, and it's got all the evidence and the photos from years ago on, on what, where it was. Well, this position. map is uh, the 1890s, and it shows Wuyong Creek coming down here and going out into the ocean. That is blocked, and it just forms swamp, and any floodwaters that comes down through Wuyong Creek just goes back over the land. Yeah, and you've got the, uh, as you come further down from Wuyong, which is the L1 on the map, we come down past the new development of the uh, music festival site. So there's sometimes 30,000 people there, 
and all of that has to w be washed down into this area and again all the water from there comes down to pond down near the L2 which is the, another natural outlet that was created uh, in place uh, that's been blocked off and if you come down here you can start to see uh, the photos from 74 showing the outlet to the ocean and then in 76 it was closed off by council um, and that's what we're now dealing with now is that that's two outlets blocked off there are other flood mitigation uh, that has taken place with the levee yeah, the levee bank uh, the bund is another issue. So there's all these compounding issues that have come through over the years that's got us to where we are now. And this is not reflected in Council's flood strategy and planning. Council had money to do a community survey after the 2017 flood, which was a disaster for Billy Nudgel. And there were 350 responses. And most of those responses said, open up the creeks, open up the, so that the floodwaters can flow out the way they used to do to the ocean. And council refused to put that in their flood plan. They did some computer modeling, which we asked them to do, but they did not factor in 50 years of siltation over the, uh, the creeks, over Marshall's Creek and the smaller creeks that feed into it, over the golf course lakes and two other lakes that are in the town, which were part of the original flood management plan by engineers Webb McEwen to make sure that Ocean Shores was flood free and it was using the natural outlets. And the Capricornia Canal was part of the, de the development consent for that was to have a flood overflow outlet to the ocean. Okay. And that was um, identified in the minutes of council uh, yes. going back. That, and in 2017, I think we made council aware. We can't, uh, Councillor Alan Hunter presented uh, an attempt to uh, a notice of motion 9.4, and in that it was explaining the history of, of the area. So council has been informed about it all. Uh, we just hope now that they can see a way forward to implementing what was recommended in uh, that motion 9.4 in 2017. Is that what this letter is here? No, uh, that, no that's no. an earlier letter. Greg Alderson uh, was the uh, Shire Engineer, Works and Services Director, and he wrote uh, while he was still in that role, he's since retired, that, uh, and he was talking about the Mother's Day flood, and he's saying the outlet that we're asking now to be open, it's clear that the connection to the outlet makes a significant difference to flood levels. And as you would no doubt notice from these figures, plus the dredging of the creek to 2.5 metres, as you would recall, the outlet on its own did not make anywhere near the difference given overall conditions existing. But they didn't have the figures there of siltation. So if you take that into account, uh, it's even more protection from people. We've got people here saying, as with my home, my husband and I, our, the main part of our house missed out by one centimetre from getting flooded. On, on this flood? in this flood. Okay. The same way. Four centimetres was ours and again I, I really think now we need to see something happen because you know it can be alleviated. I think we can hopefully work with council to address it now. I think now's the time. Council and state government. Yeah. Yes. 
It's time the Department of Planning uh, looked at the, uh, their own planning uh, rules and regulations and started to see that in a town where floodwaters can't get out, it is time to look at the rules and change them if necessary because you've got ground truthing, you've got people giving witness to what happened in their homes and council staff not prepared to take this into account. One council staff member on the uh, flood engineering uh, section of council said we can't take into account uh, the um, hearsay from the community. Well, that's exactly what a community survey is all about. I think all the documentation that I've seen, and we've helped Jan get it onto the website, uh, it, it, it shows you the complete history. If you want to have a look at it, it, it allows you to go through and see what sort of a battle has unfolded over the years to, to try and get the truth out. And, and it is the truth and it's factual, and then it gets messed up with either some kind of a, an agenda to, to just not listen to common sense. And I, I, I'm gobsmacked at it all at the moment, but it's, it has to get to a point where people's li livelihoods and homes are all destroyed due to what could have been addressed years ago, uh, which was to open up these outlets and maybe the, dr the bridging of the river. The removal of the rock wall down at Brunswick definitely has slowed the flow of the, the Marshalls Creek up and it doesn't, it does, it, it silts up because it can't pull the water, uh, the, the sand and everything through, so. Jim, when you say they're removing, you mean the addition, right? Of this wall here, yeah. is that correct? We'll see, yeah, that's correct. It's been, yes. it's been artificially here it put is in. Here. Uh, and this was built in the 1970s when the boat harbour so this is specifically, this is Brunswick River here? Yes, that's Brunswick River. And this is the entrance of Marshalls Creek into the Brunswick River. It's a beautiful, wild river, Marshalls Creek. It, it's fed by floodwaters coming down from the hills, from Main Arm, from the Pocket, from Middle Pocket. And um, the floodwaters come down here and for millennia, You've been able to flow along Marshalls Creek into the Brunswick and out into the Pacific Ocean. And that's that river coming down here that then runs out through here, through um, South Golden's here, yep. New Brighton, Ocean Shores here, and hits the Brunswick River here. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. And, and, and then all of a sudden, this wall was constructed. Now, if you look at that wall, it's 400 metres across there. This is almost that, that wall, and there is one little outlet for water through there, and even that is blocked by a wall. Over here is a wall built so that trucks could come along here and put further fuel and make that, that wall higher. That is an enormous barrier to the natural outflow of the water from Marshalls Creek. And, you and, can see it there. And then you, you can see all the sand build up. That it, because there's no flow, the sand build up's there and then it's just, it's creeping up and up. Whereas before, it's So was, that wall has been added, right? That's this internal wall. Yes. You can actually yes. see how that blocks this off and has to force everything that way. It, exactly. And even if that wall were removed, it would make an enormous difference to allowing flood waters to escape. So and who, yeah. because Billy Nudgel is that is sitting there and is low lying. These floodwaters have nowhere else to go except back through the system and floods the village of Billy Nudgel. So if you do, all yeah, of it floods all of it. If you see it? this, yeah, it does. that's that's your that's your dam because all the water comes in. And we get we get local flooding. You get source coming down and local flooding. That's when we got big big issues. And all of this water that comes down has to work its way through right down to Brunswick to this little outlet here to flow out to the ocean. That's the problem. 
things that I see. Is that correct, Ann? Yes. And traditionally, too, these floodwaters came down, cleaned out the Brunswick and allowed the opening of the Brunswick River to be deeper and far more effective to save Mullumbimby, to allow the floodwaters which were coming down from Mullum to escape as well. There's now a, a bank up all the way back. And you can also see here, well, we've, we've dealt with L1 and L2, but South Golden Beach Community Centre has been built on another natural outlet to the ocean. And, on and Billy Nudgel Creek. On Billy Nudgel Creek, which is, works its way through to there. And then just down from it, there's another natural outlet which allows New Brighton to escape out to the ocean. Is that uh, L4? Yep. Uh, and then again, working its way down to um, Brunswick at Readings Bay, which is blocked off as well. So there's there's a number of outlets uh, that could be re-established with a weir system. I, and again, I wouldn't want to get into the engineering of it, but it just needs something to alleviate the high levels to, to access the ocean when needed. So why did they block them off in the first place? There was a, a sand mining company that um, really all along the coastline from Pottsville to Byron Bay. And that was in the 50s and they took um, the radioactive black um, sand root hole. And so the sand miners built a wall all along the coast. And you can see that uh, if you walk from South Dublin Beach Fern Beach uh, along the coast and that is a significant dam wall and there was no thought of allowing those creeks to escape through to the ocean when that was built. And so here again another 50, 60 years of human made disaster. And, on, on the land. And what happened with the handing over of the uh, estate to council? Did that, um, uh, were there any anything or any liabilities that council had? To, well, and they yes, had to do? the, the um, development consent for stage two of Ocean Shores, which was the Capital Cornea Canal, so it's a canal development, was the opening of the canal and the overflow to be constructed through the dunes out to the ocean. And the uh, Princess properties uh, used the creek bed of, um, and I think it's um, Ruyong Creek. Uh, I'd have to get back to you on that. Uh, and, um, which was a natural flood outlet to the ocean, which is still there, still fills with water, but it, here again, like all the other creeks, it backs up and floods Fern Beach, South Golden Beach. And I think we noticed in the 1987 Mother's Day flood uh, news story, they talked about the bun. What, what actually happened with the bun? And what's wrong with the bun? Well, it was supposed to be a bridge. That was also part of the development consent. And the council undertook to build the bridge and the developers gave them a bond. And uh, just off the top of my head, it was quite a lot of money for the time, something like a million dollars. And instead, in the middle of the night, the council brought in bulldozers and just put an earth bun over the canal along um is that what this is down here no the no, no. bun is <laughs> where the um there's a bun that is now it should have been a bridge built uh, and it's go, it goes across the, um, uh, the road at calora way isn't it no um calorie circuit. circuit sorry yeah at calorie circuit that was supposed to be a bridge, so that would have allowed the, bun there, the free what? flow backwards and forward and forwards of flood waters. Instead, yeah. Sorry, there was that's... this earth construction and uh, two very small pipes that were supposed to handle everything uh, of, uh, I think, uh, 
less than a metre diameter, those pipes. And Tweed Council, um, in the end, threatened to sue Byron Shire uh, for uh, flooding the cane fields. Like when the water rains in the south and there's, there's flooding, it flows to the north and floods the cane fields. So Byron Council was going to be sued by Tweed. So Byron paid Tweed Council to put in two culverts under Calgary Circuit and open up that fund to make it far more effective management of the flood waters. And Council actually paid Tweed Council to put in these very significant culverts under Calgary Circuit. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you can see it there. That's it. And that was around 2008 that was that happened. But again, the culverts weren't put in as a flow through, they were built. Why did they build them higher up? Uh, because local activists wouldn't allow it to be at ground level, at the floor of the canal. Right. Uh, they insisted that it be a metre higher, and they wanted one of their members to have the key to the bun um, gate so that they could be in, in control of whether or not to open up uh, the two culverts. Uh, and the culverts again, I don't think were maintained. There was there's root systems and trees growing up through yeah. it. It's never been maintained. Again, a lot of things have been done ad hoc, but it has never lowered the flood levels. And I think yeah. that's what we're dealing with now. Yeah, we really need a long-term strategy. Uh, we certainly recognise that everything that we're asking for can't be done all at once. Um, but there does need at long last to be a comprehensive long-term strategy to make this area totally free of flooding. We're so close to the ocean and so close to where those floodwaters are meant to flow out. They've been blocked. Now let the floodwaters go. Let us live in peace and not have people awake at night just frantic the floodwaters are going to come into their homes again. And there have been probably hundreds of homes in this area who've been affected and it's getting worse. It's more it's so time it's yeah. stopped. And it's more so in 2022 is the big one that's happened and you reckon there's a lot more people now that shouldn't have been impacted by the floodwaters? Yeah, and then here again a month later we're threatened again with flooding and who knows? Uh, in a week or so, there's already signs from the weather from BOM mm. that there could be more rain. And Lismore has had two floods within a month. Uh, let's start to get real yeah. about the proper management of a floodplain. And there's, uh, isn't there water pumps here that do a job of pumping the water out from the council? No. What those water pumps do and a levee was built around South Golden Beach for some of South Golden Beach. And there's this pump and um, it actually pumps the floodwaters back into the Capricornia Canal. The community asked for a channel to be constructed so that the water could be pumped into that channel and the channel could take the floodwaters out to the ocean and council refused to do it. So in that, within that um, small dam, within that levee around South Golden Beach, the floodwaters are pumped back into the Capricornia Canal, which is a dam anyway. So that will flood add, just somebody add the, else. Add the water back out into the canal that's got to go out to the ocean. We're, we're, what I'm seeing with that is that, so from this area here of South Golden, it's pumping it back into this canal here, yeah. it goes out here, and then when it's flooded, it just comes back through here and comes back into South Golden, right? Yes, yes that's so. correct. And what also happened this time, it broke through, the canal broke through and went round, and, it, and what we had is a circular motion of, of pumped water, if it was being pumped in, would just circulate back round again. So 
It's, it, it, I believe it naturally will have to be redirected out here at L2. That would solve all the problems uh, with the flood levels for in the this north. area. For the north. For the north. And then New Brighton can deal with what they need to do. Uh, South Golden, New Brighton. And then something happens down at, at Brunswick. Because Brunswick even floods. There, you know. there are claims that if those creeks were allowed to escape through to the ocean, and especially the Capricornia Canal flood overflow, that the ocean would come in and flood this whole area. And that is just nonsense. People who make those claims have no engineering proof that uh, that would ever happen. The, uh, if there is, say, a cyclone or a tsunami, well, whether we've got creeks, whatever, the ocean will come in to the whole area. That is a totally different scenario. It will come in along the Brunswick River and everywhere else it would come. But in a flood, we're talking about water generated on the land trying to get out to the ocean. Mm. And the flood overflow was designed to be at least three metres above ocean level. And it's an overflow. It's got a, a wall that the ocean would have to come up through and uh, any inundation like that would first of all come in through the Brunswick River and then Which perhaps is, yeah. enter Marshall's Creek. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I saw on the, the, the council presentation that there were some case studies and suggestions and it makes sense that you could just put um, some kind of a weir that it opens up when it's to a certain level and it drains down. And I think I noticed in 2005, with the flood down Helen Street and the, and the, the boat that went down there, the video that we've got, it actually, we got to the so, uh, South Golden Beach um, Community Centre and then the water was going and heading towards the community centre and then the guys got out of the boat and they ran down to the ocean. So the ocean was nowhere near the height of the water. Then. No, and exactly. therefore, if it did open up, it would just flow down to, to the ocean and escape. And again, the effects would be felt back behind it all. So um, there's certainly a big, uh, you know, steps ahead now to try and get to the bottom of it all and get to the truth of it because I think there's been a lot of cover-up go on. Uh, council has made out that they don't, you know, they, they weren't back in when it was all done, that they don't have any, any recourse to, to do anything. But they've been told in 2017 that they need to, uh, to at least address it now. Community asked so it's not yeah. for it to be open. In 1976, the council ordered the developers of Princess Properties to close the outlet of the Capricornia Canal because a few people wanted to continue going along the sand mining road to go fishing and they petitioned the council and really without any studies, the council just ordered it closed and the developers said, you've got to be joking. This is part of your development consent for the canal. If you close that, you will flood the area and flood the people who live here. It, we will not do this unless you accept full liability. And it's in the council minutes that the council said in 1976, and we've got copies of those minutes, we accept full responsibility if flooding is caused because we have closed off the Capricornia Canal. Well, I think that's the, where it's at now, and it's uh, all the information is on the website. You'll be able to, access, people can access it. And what is that website, please? Uh, it'll be, if you Google Brunswick Valley Flood History, you'll get the link uh, to it. Um, that, that's the best way to just we'll put it in. And yeah, it'll it'll be and and then there's also Facebook uh, links that we've got as well. And it's just trying to get the information out to people. So we want the truth to come out. And Frank Mills, the former councillor, and Frank's passed on at the moment. He wants he, he's trying to 
present, he presented a lot of the case uh, of all of this from a council perspective, so he, he knew he'd want all this to come out as well. He certainly would. A lot of people have, you know, suffered and, and the anguish behind all the flooding when it starts. We don't want to go down that path again. No more distress for people to be flooded in their homes, to get out of their beds into this murky, swampy, horrible water that's mm. invaded while they were asleep. And yeah. that's now, it, it's been under threat now twice in the last 35 days. I think you can see from the aerial, and, and it'll be great to see the drone shots of just where the ponding has occurred and where it goes to. The, the drone shot should tell uh, if the, these outlets do have water heading out to the ocean. Uh, I think that's going to be a lot of the proof that we need now. Well, we, on the footage that we've got, we, well, there's definitely pooling right here. Yes. Um, right here where that L4 is, there's yes. massive pooling there. And we came down here and we found there is a river that just runs that way. And you can see it just coming straight down and ending. We've got footage of that as well. Okay. Oh, that is brilliant. Yeah. Well because done. it would have closed over if they were man-made, as in naturally closing off over time if they've been shut off. But they've, they've still got water in them. That's what we would like to have a look at. Um, is there anything else, Jan? I think that I think we've given a summary, but it's really about the people finding out what they want to see happen now. I think it's yeah. It's down so to I mean, there are people talking about suing the council, but I feel we all need to work together to achieve the results to make this area flood free. So let's work together with the state government and there and the federal government. They've got to come up with this promised money that they're supposed to be handing out for flood mitigation. Okay, let's all work together. The community, please listen to the community and hear their witnesses to what's happened to them and believe them. Don't reject it because some computer model which was fed very misleading information told them that it wouldn't make a difference. It makes an enormous difference to let those creeks, to let the floodwaters out, to do something about unblocking the wall at Reading, at Reading Spay, and especially let's start with opening up the flood outlet to the Capricornia Canal so that the council is no longer in breach of the development consent. A petition? There's by, by petitions happening right now, but petitions are ignored. And just the Capricorn Canal opening, the most important one to do is at this one here? Yes. And you would agree from that aerial photography? Well, I would also feel that that one there felt like it was pretty full as well, but it was definitely a river coming down there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that will alleviate New Brighton because they, and you know, the, the store down there at New Brighton uh, went through its highest level. If you had that open, that would alleviate New Brighton, wouldn't it? They wouldn't rise as high. We this, the, this broke out naturally, didn't it, many years ago it during did. a flood event? And you can still see where it broke out. Yeah, there's no yeah, trees still, growing there at all. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And there are so many witnesses giving really graphic accounts of seeing, and it wasn't anything to do with the ocean coming in, it was this massive wall of water that just couldn't go anywhere except push its way through. And that's what made itself its way out here. If, yes. you, if people want to just work their way through that timeline uh, that we've got on the website, there's a lot of information and a lot of photos that will show where it's what, what, what it has been and where it is now. And I think that's the start of getting your head around it. It's, it's, there's a big history of it all, but um, hopefully now we can, we can get to the bottom of it. Yes, what, what I feel a lot of pain about is looking at Marshall's Creek, this, this beautiful creek. It's the north arm of the Brunswick River. It's an estuary. It, it's a very precious community asset, I guess, but treasure. And it has been totally compromised. This deep, wonderful river
fed with all these floodwaters coming down from the hill was meant to make its way out to the ocean, help the Brunswick River on the way so that Molumbimbi could be um, free as well. And this is, has been compromised, not allowed to happen. Give us back our beautiful river. Well, Joan, I've heard stories from um, locals that grow up here at my age. Um, yes. They say that this water behind you guys was clear water. And yes. people fished in here and swam. And how many years ago was that? Well, uh, um, it was around the, the 80s because we came here in the 80s and drove out and it, it had a blue tinge to it. And uh, the other thing people spoke to us about was the fact that prawn trawlers came to the New Brighton store. Yeah. So that's how deep it was. They were allowed to come up. But it makes sense now that it's completely silted. And we're talking now from you know, 1980s to now, it's silted up to a point where it's causing more problems. Well, low tide, you can barely get a, uh, a paddleboard, a stand up paddleboard exactly. out without yeah. going through the deep sections. Exactly. It's well, that shallow. Well, yeah. we used to go from here all the way down to Brunswick in the Marshalls Creek in a, in a tinny. But now I notice just down at the bridge near Redgate Road down here, it's silted up at the mouth of that. So that's a significant thing that I've seen that you've got to go right to the to the far side to get round that because you know, so that's that's a visible sign now that there's there's silting up exactly. going on. If you block a river, there's got to be consequences, and we're really uh, we've had 50 years of this gradual blockage, and it, it's time it stopped. And this, this little wall here, this was man-made as well, both of them. Yep. And since that internal wall was made, uh, the extra wall, did, when was that, what year was that? I think that was in the 80s. That's, that's my understanding. So around the time that there were significant changes in the river yes. right here. Yes, and it just can't get out. And council staff say, oh no, once it floods, it can flow over that because it's lower than the wall. But but the Once drag. it floods to what height? What are you talking about? How big a flood has it got to be before the river can have some kind of relief? But my limited knowledge says that if you're putting that there, the sand, the flow is not there. It's not dragging out. Exactly. And therefore, it, it's banking up the, uh, and constantly uh, banking up the sand. And that's what you, you can see there now, is that it's filled with sand. And it backs all the way up. If the flow is not coming, being dragged out of the Capricornia Canal, down here we're getting a build up of sand. And um, you know, you've got to bring, bring the river back to life, I think. That's actually where the foundation of the Byron Shire began, at Reddings Bay. There was uh, the uh, uh, Steve King and the Boyd brothers, they were timber getters. They spotted the opening of the river, they went up to uh, the uh, Tweed area and then came back later and founded the very first village or settlement here on Reading's Bay because there was fresh water. There was none on the other side of the Brunswick. Uh, and they opened up this whole area. And in the 1850s, ocean-going boats, ocean-going shipping was built in that bay. And they used the hardwoods that were being harvested uh, from the rainforest. So that was Port Brunswick. That's how this whole area began. And we're talking about the 1850s. It's the oldest settlement in the Byron Shire. We couldn't do it these days because our bay has been lost. Mm. There's no draft there for, as you're saying, a stand-up paddleboard. Yeah, it sort of, mm. yeah, it just sort of says that we've gone backwards. I think uh, yeah. if we're looking after the environment, which is what a lot of this is about, we're we're, we're failing. Yes, you know? exactly. Exactly, and we're thinking we can rewrite history and pretend that these creeks didn't push through to the ocean. Mm. Okay, well, is there anything else? Anything else that you need to? 
I think we've covered uh, a lot of information there. Mm. Well, it, it's, it's, not, a story, it's a starting it? It's a starting point. Mm. Yeah. 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 It's in the people's hands now, I think. People too. have got the right to truth. Yeah. And then they can work through it. I refuse to believe this or, yeah, you could be... I understand now because I saw this happen and saw this happen and my street this happened. Everybody's got a story and everyone down at the shopping centre, there's so much anger I'm finding. People are coming over and saying, do you know what happened at my place? Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. We've got to open up the water and already the people went through the community survey. They expected the council to take action on what they had asked for and the council refused to listen to the testimony of the people. They needed computer modelling, but the computer modelling is only as good as the data that it's fed. And if you feed incorrect data into that computer model, you will get incorrect results. Well, the natural event that has just happened has shown that the levels all around have increased to a, to a higher level. And uh, I think what people have witnessed and experienced will be the testimony now. We need to hear what, what they've all been through and then work our way back into the information that we've got and try and present something more to council. And we've got it documented on the website, Brunswick Valley Flood History, and go through that. There's, there's so much Make truth, their own opinions. truth yeah. backed up with uh, fact. by fact. Yeah. Who would be the councillors to talk to or to write letters to? Or... Okay, well, the Ocean Shores Community Association has just sent a letter at the beginning of last week to every councillor, to the mayor, to the general manager, requesting that council takes all the steps to open up the flood overflow at the south, at the Capricornia Canal. The other side, the north of uh, A Fern formal Beach. request. Yeah. I think uh, councillor, yeah. we found councillor Alan Hunter has been a great ear and, and has attempted to address it in the past. So he, he, he would be aware of it and uh, be able to take it forward well, if the councillors aren't aware of it, we invite them to come and listen to us very peacefully and, and let's share the information. Yeah, and I think, Jan, you were wanting to organise a community meeting somewhere there through Oscar? Probably, as yes, as well. uh, after Easter. Okay. Yeah. Well, it gives people time now to have a look at the website, the information, put all their ideas, their their wish list together on what they would like to see happen and then it can be presented to council through those mechanisms. And it, it's not shouting or blaming, it's let's all work together, let's look at the past, learn from the past and once again make this area free of flood. Hmm. Very good. Yes, well, thank you, you guys. And the date today? Uh, the date today is the 2nd of, of April. 2022.